Good morning, everybody. The, uh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chairman. The seal, our seal just fell down. That's fine. <laughs> oh, no. Good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome. It is the, uh, the hour of 9.50, and I'd like to call the special meeting of the King County Board on uh, December 21st to order. So welcome. Uh, may we please have a roll call? Ellen? Ellen, are you present? Okay, Bates? Present. Berman? Berman, present. Brown? Here. Davis? Davis? Okay. Ellen arrives. Um, Ford? Here. Braz? Here. Gums? Gums here. Iqbal? Iqbal present. Kenyon? Here. Caius? Caius present. Kopi? Kopi's present. Leonard? Here. Lewis? <clears throat> Lewis here. Martin? Martin here. Molina? Molina present. Sanchez? Here. Shepro? Here. Uh, Silva? Silva? Strathman? Strathman? Sergis? Here. Tepe? Here. Weber? Present. Wonicki? Wonicki present. We have I a quorum. Alan came in as well, Celeste. What's going on? Strathman is here. The microphone is off. The quorum. Um, and uh, I'd like to welcome you all, uh, especially during this holiday season, to give up your morning uh, to be here. Uh, may we please have the Pledge of Allegiance uh, is, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance is going to be, um, Jane Talish, uh, our Administrative Assistant, uh, will be leading today's Pledge of Allegiance. Jane? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. <laughs> and before we move to public comment, I just would like to welcome um, Mr. Shepro. Uh, welcome back. I'm glad to see you're in good health and uh, able to join us. Um, is there any public comment um, as a matter of protocol? Individuals who have registered to speak on agenda items prior to 8.30 a.m. this morning uh, are allowed five minutes to address the board. Registered speakers for non-agenda items are allowed three minutes with a total public comment time limited to 30 minutes. We ask that speakers refrain, refrain from statements, remarks, or conduct that might become disruptive to the conduct of the county board or which might cause disturbances. Are there any public comments? Are there any public comments online? Having no public comments, um, um, we can move on to our next agenda item. The appointments. May we have that up on our screen, please? I'm not sure which one that is. Here we go. <clears throat> Several days ago, a, a revised committee appointments were sent out to you, um, which included um, all other committees, but not the CARES Act Allocation Committee, the Labor Management Committee, the Legal Affairs Committee, and the Claims Committee. As soon as it gets pulled up. I don't know that I have. Did everybody receive a hard copy of it? All right. The 
who don't have it there. If you all have received a hard copy of it, uh, may I have a motion and a second to approve uh, all the appointments as distributed to you? Thumbs moves to approve. Who's that? Seconds. Eight second. Gums moves. Second. Eight second. Is there any discussion? I'd like to, uh, hearing no discussion, any discussion online? Then may I please have the clerk call the roll call? Sure. Allen? Allen, aye. Bates? Yes. Berman? Yes. <clears throat> Brown? Yes. Davist? Ford? Yes. Roz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi? Leonard? Yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Yes. Silva? Silva? Okay. Strathman? Rathman. There it is. Okay. Sergis. Yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. That passes. I would like uh, again to extend my appreciation and thanks for uh, helping all helping us put together these appointments. Um, your guidance and your insights and uh, on how to manage all of this it was much appreciated and always welcome. So <laughs> thank you. The next, uh, we're moving on to our new and unfinished business. And I'd like to open up a discussion on the establishment to approve and hire uh, two positions. Uh, one is a social media specialist, and the other one is a public information officer. And I believe you have all been given those job descriptions. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes. And could we have the salary and benefit posted? Thank you. Pending the outcome of this discussion, I would like to be able to ask you if we, so you know where I'm, um, or my direction is to be able to uh, seek your approval to move this to the December 30th Finance Committee for their consideration, and then bringing it to the full board at our next board meeting on January 12th. So the floor is open. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, this is Mo Iqbal. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Mr. Iqbal. Uh, yes, I'd like to know, um, why we need this, I have not received anything. Number two, we have an Outlook, uh, not an Outlook Outreach Coordinator. Uh, where does he fit into these uh, require, into these job vacancies? Is uh, his job being eliminated? Uh, is, is it in addition to uh, Outlook Coordinator? Um, my concern is that the Outlook Coordinator that we have is a virtual Outlook, not Outlook Outreach. That's virtual, and what I see here is also virtual. Public information officer, I don't know if he will be really contacting the people, uh, but as you said, um, this is a social media specialist. Uh, do we really need social media specialists? We are finding out that virtual contact don't work. We are learning from our children who cannot learn by attending Zoom sessions. We need, if we need to grow uh, this county, we need to outreach in person. And how would we achieve that goal? Uh, as I see it, it's a kind of a enlarging the government without giving our taxpayers any benefits. So I would oppose it. 
Uh, if I may, I'd like to comment on that. Um, the two job descriptions, I believe, were sent in your packet. Uh, so please, uh, please take a look. The outreach coordinator position was defunded uh, due to the lack of riverboat funding. So this would be a new uh, permanent funding uh, item that would not be dependent upon riverboat funds. Uh, the outreach coordinator has uh, that job again was uh, was terminated, I believe, in early November uh, by the board. So there is no longer such a position. This is a new position uh, that we are proposing. That would be a permanent position. The social media specialist is an outgrowth of that original outreach coordinator, mm. which would be impartial. Part of that responsibilities for that one position would certainly be the continuation of Kane County Connects, mm -hmm. which has got a large readership of, I think, over 10,000, 20,000 actively read. Uh, it is now currently on a daily basis. This could be attenuated to be bi weekly um, or, or twice a week. Uh, depending upon the will of the board and the coordination with this new position. Um, also, additionally, there would be Facebook postings and coordinating without throughout all of our departments uh, information that would be available to the public for their consideration. I hope that answers your question, Mr. Iqbal. Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, uh, yeah, may I say something? Of course. Yeah. Uh, today I got a County Connect, and it has Mr. Nagel's name, outreach coordinator. So, what is which one is correct? Is the uh, the Kent County Connect uh, email is correct, or you are correct? Who is up to date on this? Um, he is hired under a contract as an independent contractor through one of our independent agencies, our hiring agencies. It is a temporary position hired for 200 hours, sir. So he is not on full-time salary. After those 200 hours, that job will be eliminated. Is it $200 a day? I'm sorry, didn't hear you. Uh, is it $200 a day, ma'am? No, 200 hours. Oh, 200 hours, okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd like to speak. Oh. <clears throat> I'm sorry, who? Ma Madam Chair Gums. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, uh, in reference in reference to our social media presence, um, we have over 7,000 viewers on Facebook and it's growing as I understand it. So I believe this is an opportunity that um, is well needed. And uh, as far as the public information office goes, um, most large agencies have such an officer. And um, frankly, I'm surprised that we haven't utilized this uh, prior to now, um, but it would be an in-person and an outreach as I read the job description. So I would um, be in favor of it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Frost? Yeah, I just wanted to maybe do a little bit of history for some of the new board members, but King County Connects was uh, started about seven years ago. I believe it was an idea of former Chairman uh, Lousen, and Mr. Nagel has hired a uh, strong background in, in uh, journalism from the Aurora Beacon, and uh, it grew beyond our wildest dreams. I mean, we used to market in every couple thousand, and it, it grew to the way beyond the maximum of what we had originally hoped. And uh, you know, we all know that it was defunded and Mr. Nagel was dismissed recently. Um, so I'm really glad to see this coming back and I thoroughly support it. I think really the discussion should uh, focus on whether we need one person or two, I think is the only thing that should be discussed. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing I would have a question on it. And uh, I would also say that Mr. Fonstock from IT gave a report to the administration committee stating that they've done several things to streamline the, uh, the, the uh, newsletter, but they lacked an IT, or I'm sorry, they lacked a content coordinator. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a hole that was uh, described to us in the system right. that we need to fill. That's, that is correct. 
Madam Chairman, Bates, please. Um, hold, hold on a second. We have something. Okay. You're next. Yes. Thank you. Um, I've, I've given a lot of thought to this. And I think, as you know, I've spoken with quite a few of my colleagues. And these, so these are my thoughts. I think to some degree, they're shared thoughts uh, of other people in the room. But to Drew's point about how many people we need, my, my I, I think that the, the topics that we're discussing in the, in the job descriptions are valid considerations, but very difficult to evaluate at this point in time in the context of saying, well, we need to put on two full-time employees. And my concern is that I don't want to, I don't want to overreach at this point and then find out that we've got a budgetary consideration that, that puts us in a trick box of trying to deal with existing employees. I mean, we know that the state's attorney's office intends to hire more people or is hiring them. Uh, we know that, we've, that the judiciary has got massive cleaning expenses related to, to COVID and that type of thing. And what, what I would like to see is that we, we create a position, and I'm not, I'm not denigrating titles, but sometimes they can be confusing. We create a position that is intended to, to target these goals and do it with one person mm -hmm. that would operate substantially on the same economic level that we've, that we've had uh, historically with this, because uh, you know, frankly, we don't have any money in the budget uh, to, to, to do this. And I would, I, would, I would feel comfortable trying to figure out how to accommodate one of these salaries and move it forward. But to jump into two um, gives me a level of discomfort, both economically and, and you know, to Mr. Dr. Iqbal's point, you know, do we need it? Well, we, we, we may, we may not. But I think we should. I think we should move forward. I just think we should move forward in a in a manner slow enough that we can address the economics of it and kind of ease into the concept. You know, maybe we maybe we restructure Kane County Connects to some degree and have it be a lesser, you know, less than everyday publication. Um, you know, if we can combine those two roles, um, I think we can begin to address our legitimate public relations needs and keep the public informed. But still operate within uh, our budget. And next year's budget is going to be, uh, uh, you know, I think it's a Chinese curse. I hope you live in interesting times. Uh, next, next year's budget is going to be interesting. Uh, this year's budget was balanced simply because we got COVID money, uh, period. Uh, and we were $14 million short until we get that money. So the money that we've got in the hopper right now that we were able to 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 retain from last year is is is, is spent and and uh, we need to be cautious that we don't fund a position without knowing what our income stream is because if we take it from a grant or from a reserve that's a one-shot deal and when that's gone then the question is uh, you know where does the where does the money come from so I would support moving ahead with creating a position that perhaps hybridizes Kane County Connects and adds some of the other characteristics to it and ease into this so that we can um, uh, address valid concerns about are we doing more than we need, but still begin to move forward that with, not move forward, I mean, we need to maintain public communication. I'm supportive of that. I just want to do it in a way that we can afford it and that makes us as a board look prudent uh, with our expenditures. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I believe um, <clears throat> Mr. Leonard, you'll be next. Oh. Mrs. Bates. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, so I believe that during the COVID emergency especially, people have become very dependent on King County Connects being very thorough in our coverage of the coronavirus. So I think we definitely need to support that in, um, in a somewhat emergency situation right now. Um, as far as having the two, the two positions, um, I, think, I think of the, the person who'd be doing Kane County Connects is more of our journalist. 
And I believe that takes, that's a full-time job. Uh, the other, the more community outreach position, I think of that as someone sort of like Clayton Muhammad in Aurora, who is reaching out to the community all the time, um, not just online, but in person, you know, once COVID gets over. Um, and I think we have to do something about the question, what does the county do? How come every door I knock on, nobody knows what the county does? So if we had, so I, I would still support two people. I, I appreciate the, the budgetary um, uh, considerations. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Leonard. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, the point I'd like to make on this is I do believe we need to communicate with the public. They need to know what's going on. Uh, continuing King County Connects, I have no problem with, especially at a comparable salary that was paid before, although it is not budgeted for this year, so we're going to have to find that money somewhere. Um, but I think the bigger question is, what are our wants and what are our needs here in the county? There are many things we want, but what we need, we have to address first. And I think initially, before we start hiring additional people, we have to take care of our existing people. I know at the uh, last King County board meeting, uh, State's Attorney Mosser had mentioned that she was understaffed and the people were overworked. And I believe that's a true and legitimate concern on her part that we have to address. Um, in that area alone, that could increase uh, expenditures anywhere from a half million to a million dollars a year if we satisfy those needs. Um, I know the Judiciary Labor Contract is coming up for renewal this year, and the ASME Labor Contract is also coming up. I know last year, before we applied the CARES money, we were about $14.5 million under but or over budget. Um, health insurance is going to go up if it goes up a reasonable two to three percent. That's another half a million dollars. The judiciary cleaning expense is about six hundred thousand dollars a year. And then, of course, we have to address our approximately thirteen hundred employees and make sure that they are taken care of first. So I'm in favor of hiring um, Mr. Nagel or someone back to handle Kane County Connects. I am not in favor of adding any additional people at this time because of our budgetary concerns. I'm not saying I wouldn't like that, it wouldn't be nice, but we have to address our needs and we have to be in budget. And when you take a look at last year's budget um, before the CARES money being $14.5 million um, to the negative, we've got to realize it's going to be a comparable thing this year. So in order to spend another quarter of a million dollars um, right now, without addressing all our current needs, I don't think serves the, the county well. And finally, I think we have a responsibility to the taxpayers to make sure that we spend their money wisely and that maybe we don't get all our wants, but we do take care of our needs. And in my opinion, the needs are our current employees. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Mrs. Wernicke. Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, I totally agree with um, Mr. Martin and Dr. Iqbal and uh, Bill Leonard. Um, I'd be in favor of rehiring an outreach coordinator, whether it's Rick or somebody else. I think that information, people are constantly looking at our website, looking for that information, which I think is great. Um, but something that nobody has really mentioned is we have 24 districts, and when we run for county board, we run as public servants, and we need to reach out to our own communities as well. My phone rings all the time. Everybody's got my phone number, and I bring any of concerns of my constituents to the county and try to get it settled, whether it's health, public safety, CARES Act money, whatever it may be. And then I take information that I learn at, at the county, at my meetings, if they pertain, you know, something really that pertains to my district. And I bring that information back to my district. You know, I attend the village meetings, I attend the township meetings. So I'm there to answer questions or bring information to them. So uh, again, I agree with my fellow board members, Martin Leonard and Dr. Iqbal. And, 
I'd be happy to vote yes on the outreach coordinator or the, I guess it would be the social media specialist, mm. but the public information officer due to our tight budget, which is um, going to be, you know, even I think tighter in the year 2021, mm. I would vote no to the uh, public information officer. Yes, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Laird, do we have the resolution for the public information specialist? I think we're all familiar with what Mr. Nagel has done, and that would be more or less encompassed in the, the second position, the public information, but the public information officer, that's the one I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of looking at the description. Officer. Is that in the packet? Uh, I saw it packet. pulled up there. Uh. Yeah, it's probably on that one. Salary and benefits? No. Yeah, it's on that salary and benefits email. So go to the very second tab that you have. There we go. Mm -hmm. Can you scroll down or is that just it? That's all there is. Okay, yeah, I just thought maybe that would be somewhat of a fruitful discussion to have about what are the um, the requirements of that job, the, des the description of that job, what we're looking at. I know Mr. Martin brought up the idea of potentially having one position that sort of hybridizes those two. So cutting back on the public information specialist, but enhancing some things from the public information officer. I don't know, Mr. Martin, was that just a general concept? Did you have any more specific ideas about what the that role would look like or? Oh, I'll respond. Yeah, I, I, I think that the topic and the goal is important, and I don't want to, I don't want to lose it by by having the proposal framed in a way that that on a legitimate budgetary basis we feel we can't move forward with. And if we could, if we could work and and refine the description uh, to include one job description, mm -hmm. um, you know, it it may not be a perfect world, but no, and I don't mean to harp on the budget, but those of you who haven't served on the board before know that the budget discussion begins the day after the last one is approved. Uh, that's what we spend about three quarters of our time trying to work out. I, I just, I, I, uh, I want to be constructive with it, and I don't want to have this decision, I don't want to have this decision ultimately make uh, it, it more difficult to address things that, that um, are going to need to be addressed. State's Attorney's Office, the things that I think Mr. Leonard kind of recited a litany, that's his Catholic uh, background, uh, he recited a, a, a litany, and, and that's a legitimate list of, of, uh, of uh, concerns that we have to address next year, in the, in the, and I was very disappointed that the Compromise Federal Act that is coming out seems like we're not going to have anything at this stage for local governments. So. At least that's what I read. I thought I read that they, they took the local government contribution out of that as part of the I, compromise. I, think, I, I, so, yes, I do, but I don't mean to interrupt. I believe it has been included as of today's paper. Really? Because I, I, well, it either has or it hasn't, but the bottom line is that hopefully it has, but even if it has to the degree of last year, we've got more demands than than we had. And I just, I want to be, I want to be constructive and I want to move forward. If we have to redefine the position to enable it, then that's what I want to do. Yes. Surges. Oh, Surges. Surges here. Um, sometimes I speak and I'm articulate. Sometimes it's just a jumble of ideas. This is more toward the jumble of ideas. Um, in terms of the budget, my understanding is that this was the old position was funded by the riverboat grant. And the suggestion now is to fund this through county funds. And in a four year election cycle, you know, we're not talking about $80,000. We're talking about a million dollars. And I'm basing that on 243 or $248,000 at four years, we're at a million bucks. So these are significant numbers to be adding into a budget. Um, as reading through everything, 
we are in very unusual times. It, as human resources chair, when along the notion of Ms. Marge Nicky's um, comments that we are the face of the county in our districts, every one of my municipalities reached out to me saying, where's the information, where's the information? So we encouraged Barb to, uh, at the time to get the information portal up for the, the coronavirus through her department, and then ask Rick to get it out via Kane County Connects. And and it's, it's just, there's a little bit of a hodgepodge that goes on there because I don't think that we ever clearly defined what's an information portal, what's a newsletter, what's a journalistic attempt. And in this presentation today, I'm trying to figure out the, the hierarchy of where this is going and how we're putting it together. Um, I, I also wanna say that in the very near future, as the vaccines are rolling out, having a clear communication from the county, not this countywide office versus that countywide office versus the, you know, the county chair office, having a unified message that comes across, I believe is essential. Um, in looking at the two positions, again, I'm meandering here, but in looking at the two positions, if, if Mr. Nagel is re-interviewing and saying, this is my skill set, I sometimes look at this and say, as the, how much information does Kane County Connects put out? Can we lessen that demand on whoever the individual is and ask that person to rise up to fill a more prominent communication role. Um, and, and I don't mean this to sound sarcastic and, and I'm not trying to, but communication on a coronavirus or a shooting or something like that is substantially more important to me than a bluebird or something like that. And, and I'm not trying to disingenuine my concern for things, but I think that we need to make, for, for this kind of money, we need to be able to make a priority. So if the individual that we're hiring has the skill set to be able to operate within the hierarchy that Madam Chair has put together and put out fewer, more impactful pieces of information, I would be in favor of that. But the two person scenario at a million dollar cost over a four year cycle, I, I can't get behind that right now yet. Um, and, and while some of us are saying there's no rush on this pump the brakes, slow it down, the vaccine is out there. The, the, the vaccine is there and this is important. We have, we have one nurse that faints on TV the minute she gets injected. We, we have Aurora saying we gave out 30,000 and four people had an adverse reaction the public wants to know the truth. Just give us the data. We're smart enough to figure it out. Let's get those posts out. So there is some urgency to make this happen. I just don't know that there's an urgency for both positions at this specific snapshot in time. Thank you. Thank you. Ios. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I can appreciate the uh, necessity and the uh, points made on frugality. Um, and I guess, and unlike Mr. Sergis, it seems like anytime I say anything, it doesn't come out right. So I'll, I'll try to muck through this here too. Uh, we are in the middle of a 100 year pandemic. And I believe that it is imperative that we as a county reach out to our constituents as much as we can, as much as we possibly can. Um, I've only been on the board for a couple of years, but it seemed like every time we did the budget, and it is a big process, I defer to Mr. Uh, Martin and Mr. Leonard, they are correct. We start on it and we work hard on it. Um, but it seems like the last two years, at least, that I've been on the board, uh, we have always been under the gun with some sort of shortfall up until the very last minute. Um, and I don't believe it's deliberate necessarily, but it seems like we're always $5 million down and then it's $2 million down and then somehow we manage to balance the budget. Not that I wanna make light of that. It's, it's, it's a difficult process. and It'll probably be a difficult process as we go forward, no doubt about it. 
But I think we, the first thing we need to keep in mind is that uh, we need to stay connected with our constituency and for each one of us as a board member to go out and reach out to everyone that we can. I go to all my board meetings for the <coughs> villages that I uh, represent that are in my district every chance I get at least once a month. Uh, but it is, we, but I also have like 10,000 constituents in my, uh, in my district. So it's, there's no way I'm gonna reach to all of them. We need to make sure that we uh, get to our taxpayers and we get to our residents and, and communicate them because we have two big things. We have the COVID right now. It's a 100 year pandemic. pandemic. It's out of control essentially. Uh, and we will have, as we just found out, we're just getting more and more vaccine, but it's going to be a long haul. And we need to make sure that we get those out and we have a, a method where we can communicate exactly how it's coming out to our constituents. And I don't think that as much as Mr. Nagel has done over the past years, uh, that the Kane County Connects addresses that particular thing, an overarching message that makes it clear throughout the county, whatever message we're getting out, I think that comes from the, and I always get the titles wrong, but the, the, the more expensive one, the information officer. Public information. The information officer needs to, it has to be somebody that's qualified uh, with a certificate and uh, uh, not just somebody right out of, of uh, high school or out of college as a, uh, as an intern or something like that. And I think that puts it way high. And I think it, it's, I think it's really important that we shoot for that <clears throat> at the very least getting a coordinator that'll match it all up. And that coordinator could actually dictate or uh, recommend the best way for Mr. Nagel, if he's still here, or a Kane County Connects advisor or, or Kane County Connects editor to get that through that media. But that, that position is going to be incredibly important, I believe. As, as far as um, worrying about what the budget's coming up, and we are going to have to worry about that, uh, for us to sit on money that we've gotten, and we, we used... Uh, I believe $6 million of COVID to pay off salaries to put into a reserve fund. Uh, I just recently read an article or heard about an article, I think it was on NPR, where Tennessee got uh, 1,000 COVID vaccines, vaccination doses last Monday. And for some reason in Tennessee, they decided that they would take those 1,000 uh, um, vaccine doses and put them in a freezer just in case we needed them later. And from the very top of the argument all the way down, why would you take a vaccine and put it in a freezer and wait till later because you might need it later when you're in the middle of a pandemic? I see that as a, a very direct analogy to what we are seeing today or what we're discussing today <clears throat> is why would we not fund a communication specialist right now when we need, we're in the middle of a uh, 100 year pandemic that is out of control with vaccines coming up that will be need to be, uh, as we have already found out, you know, we're gonna get, we're gonna get all of them <clears throat> and then we're only gonna get half of them or 40%. Their communications are incredibly important for uh, our uh, residents and the people that vote for us to have trust in what we're saying. So if we don't spend the money right now if we don't invest in our taxpayers, I think, I think that not only do we, we owe it to our taxpayers to spend wisely, but we also owe it to them to make sure that they understand what we are going through now and how we're going to address it. And I think that that, that position as the uh, coordinator and then uh, someone to back that person up is incredibly important right now. Thank you. Kyles. Yes, Mr. Foss. I just want to point out that as far as today's agenda, this is on here just as a discussion item. So I think if we could reach a consensus on the issue of whether to pursue one or two positions, um, we should also keep in mind that we have the option of pursuing one to take care of the immediate short-term need. And we could always revisit the second uh, uh, position as the job evolves. Um, I would recommend that, uh, again, if we could reach a consensus on which way to go today, uh, just by a show of hands or whatever. Um, I would suggest the chairman and the temporary outreach director and a few board members sit down and try and define this uh, position a little bit more 
and then they could bring that to the January Executive Committee for additional discussion and then uh, hopefully move something on to the, the January County Board meeting. Um, thank you. We have Mr. Tepe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to share some items that really go in line with what Ms. Bates said earlier. Um, four years ago when I ran for township, I spent almost all my time explaining what a township did. This past year when I ran for county board, I spent a tremendous amount of my time with people just explaining what the county does. People need information and we need some way to interconnect with them. I decided to take my own approach. So I have my own email list uh, approaching 2000 people, primarily in my own district. And I think that's one of the things that makes a difference. Whenever I send out an email on any item, I always get about half a dozen people at least just saying thanks for the information. I think Kane County Connects and expanding that is extremely important. And I think we need to do a phenomenal job of communicating it. One of my constituents just sent me an email saying, Lake County is already signing people up to get the virus. When is Kane County going to do that? So there are lots of things that could happen associated with proper communications and not only refunding this, but also expanding this, I think is very important because we're talking about 350,000 people in the county. We need to expand this database substantially. 500, yeah, <laughs> you're right. Maybe 534, is, is there any other? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. With, without uh, sounding repetitive, um, I'll try very hard not to. I would agree with Mr. Fraz and his recommendation for a few board members and the others to sit down and try to work this out. I can't see adding on two people at this point in time mm -hmm. due to the budgetary constraints. Um, I understand the importance. I understand we need to be communicative to the community um, you can't you can't get enough information out there the unfortunate part about it is is you can't force people to become informed you can spend all kinds of money you can hire all kinds of people but the fact of the matter is I believe that the majority of the people elect us to represent them and after that they don't really care too much what happens now different story right now with what's going on with the virus we absolutely have to get the communication out there. We have to inform them of what the facts are, as I've heard it said in here. Um, I, I, think, I think combining those two positions together at this point in time would be the way to go. Um, I think for a couple of different reasons, the budgetary constraints now and in the future, and also to try to bring on two people at this point in time to try to make this all mesh together might be more restrictive than than accomplishing. I think to get this one person back on, to get this communication going <clears throat> immediately would be the way to go. But I would recommend that we go with Mr. Fraz's recommendation to make that happen. Um, yes, Mr. Ford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think the purpose of the day is to uh, get this to finance, to try to see how the funds will work. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about is well, the, where the funds come from, uh, grant money is not a good way to start salaries unless it's attached to the grant only. The other thing is that I, I do like the idea that was mentioned about the uniform message. I think that's something we got to work on. Uh, I, I don't have no problem with this going to finance, but my suggestion would be to make sure that we look at the full picture with salaries and staff which I think was mentioned by uh, uh, Mr. Leonard. So I think we gotta make sure that we focus on everything we're gonna be responsible for this year, uh, but next year for uh, budget wise, along with this, with respect to the state's attorney's office and any other uh, salary issues we may have. Mr. Shepro. There, is that better? Uh, as I'm listening to the discussion, uh, it almost seems as if every time somebody speaks, um, 
the potential scope of, of the, the individuals gets broader and the number of questions that come up from that seem to get um, lengthier and more complex. Uh, at the beginning, we talked a little bit about the, the history of the outreach coordinator and actually uh, for those senior board members, you may recall that the, the whole outreach coordinator program originally was uh, something that came up at the end of the McConaughey administration out of the development department. There was a whole elaborate presentation, a nice spiral bound book about what the multiple outreach coordinators were going to do. I think there were seven or eight different categories and the original concept was that they would be working with specific identifiable community constituencies. And uh, the development department uh, put on an elaborate presentation uh, before uh, this board, uh, which I believe was uh, approved, at least in, in concept and moved forward. And then as Mr. Frost points out, after uh, the new administration took over, uh, there became less and less of this community outreach and more and more just the, the newsletter itself. Um, I, I find some of the, I think this is still largely a, um, it's a, you're, you have a position in search of a message. Uh, we've heard comments about, uh, I think, we have 24 board members and they all have their message. Uh, we have the elected officials. Uh, many of them uh, have their own information officers. They have a message. Uh, the uh, departments, I've sort of lost track as I've been away, but uh, at, at one point, many of the departments, I know, I think the health department still has a media person, exactly what that person does, uh, I'm not sure. And uh, all of that is money that's being spent now. Uh, I agree that we need something now, but I don't think we need something on the scale that's being discussed with two people. And I certainly don't think it's something that can be done in one finance committee meeting. I think finance committee has to find the money, but it also has to find why are they looking for the money? What is it exactly that's going to be done? Uh, I think uh, one of the board members spoke uh, in terms of at one point, uh, what's the phrasing? Uh, well, there, there was at one point about, I think the word dictating was used. So another question is, is this supposed to be one individual who is going to be synthesizing everything that every board member, department, et cetera. And is that person then going to be crafting the message? Is it going to be crafted uh, sort of, are, are we working for this person? Is this person working for us? Uh, I think there needs to be a lot more study uh, for the broader picture. We talked about the emergency. Uh, the emergency is not that people don't know that the county runs the development department or has a zoning ordinance. I think the emergency is very narrow and very, very limited in what we need to get out. The rest of these, uh, when I was first called about this uh, by uh, Mr. Caius, uh, we started, I think, at the, this was going to cost a minimum of $250,000 for the one individual with benefits, and then another amount of money for uh, the second person who was just going to be writing the newsletter. Uh, my question would be, the newsletter seems to be fairly important. What else is it that somebody is going to do for that amount of money? If we did fund at that level, that would be, I believe, the single highest paid position that county government has ever had. Uh, and that goes back, I think, to Mr. Leonard's point of how does this fit into an overall program? And we certainly have heard discussion about whether or not the county should have a chief administrative officer. 
So these things don't happen in a vacuum. And uh, I think finance is a good place for it to go, but not with the notion that they are going to have a perfunctory discussion and bring it back for action at, a, at the January board meeting. So uh, I would support the concept, but I think I would personally uh, support something that would be much more of an invitation to study, compile. What are the other uh, counties doing? Are they things that we can emulate? Um, as a, lawyers love to plagiarize, and I'm no exception. If somebody's got uh, a program, uh, I think we ought to know about it and study it uh, before we try to get something in essentially one meeting. Um, if I can make a comment, um, the job description, to your point, uh, for public information specialist uh, was a, is a hybrid of DuPage. Uh, this position is about half of the funding, uh, proposed position, half of the funding that uh, the County of DuPage pays their public information specialist. Uh, right now, currently uh, in DuPage, the public information specialist makes about $160,000 a year. I'm proposing a much more modest approach because of fiscal restraint and fiscal responsibility. Um, but I also believe that we do owe our taxpayers this information. Although I am in support of taking care of what we currently have, there's no question about that and the stresses uh, on our budget for our current employees. Having this opportunity to have somebody not only direct the information from all the 11 departments so that it's consistent and consolidated so that we do speak with one, one voice representing 24 different board members directed by you, that's also under my direction. And that is who that individual would be working for. If we need to start with one person, we can certainly support that. And I would, where I would be very much supportive of that. But I would hate to say that we're not going to have, like every other county that I have recognized here, or at least our collar counties, have a public information officer in King County not having one. I think it's an important lack of opportunity for us. I think I've heard during my brief two weeks here from constituents who have reached out with both anxiety and pleasure, anxiety about what's happening not only with the pandemic, but also with the economy, with what's happening with our small businesses. And it's been heart-wrenching what I have heard. I've also heard great concerns about whether or not the vaccine is safe and how it is gonna be rolled out. And it is a patchwork of information that is coming out and we have to control that information. So this is the reason not only for short-term needs, but for continued long-term needs that we're gonna be addressing. May I remind you that redistricting is gonna be happening next year. That is also something that's gonna be impacting all of our constituents and all of you, all of us. And that information has to go out as well. So there you're going to find that if you do allow this position to happen, there's gonna be a continual input from your voices, from the voices of our voters, and from our departments, that this is gonna be a critical component of how well you manage and govern Kane County. Sir, just here. In, 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 to get to a consensus point, um, you had mentioned earlier that you have a uh, uh, temporary contract maybe um, for 200 hours. Will that 200 hours sustain us for a few months or is 200 hours like a week worth of information? And there's, there's, if we're calling an emergency meeting this morning, is there something that we can do to pave that way? And then if this is going on a temporary basis, who is Mr. Nagel reporting to, to what, what, what's that hierarchy look like? 
in terms of information flow that's going out. Uh, if I may, Mr. Nagel is here and he's prepared to address that. If I could, uh, Mr. Nagel, come up and speak. My point. My, my point being, if we need to get more to sustain that out, we should do that. Um, pick up the microphone or talk in this? Oh, you can just talk into the microphone. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I uh, uh, Just a couple of quick bullet points may, might help your discussion and your, your thought process. Um, government communications in the 21st century is not a luxury. It's an essential service. It is as important an infrastructure as transportation. Uh, the county right now needs a communications professional. As far as I know, there is an county in of Kane County size that doesn't have at least one and usually has a division of communications. I uh, did a quick Google search of DuPage County. They have seven communications job descriptions ranging from chief communications officer to multimedia specialist. To say that Kane County is behind the eight ball or behind the times on this is no exaggeration. Virtually every municipality in Kane County has a communications person, and again, many have more. I talked to a friend in, uh, in Aurora, and he says there are probably five full-time positions just in the mayor's office that are a communications function in the city of Aurora. Five full-time employees that have that function in the city of Aurora, and of course, this, this is not just Clayton Muhammad, but this is other people who do special events promotions and other things like that. The county needs a professional now because we are in the, in the midst of a health emergency and there's a lot that we need to communicate. Uh, I would urge you to move as quickly as possible in this process. Uh, we have 200 hours to play with. I, um, I got done with my first week. Uh, there was 37 hours in my first week. So the time clock is ticking. Uh, I, I would advocate for both positions, but if you're not going to, to uh, move in that direction, I would suggest that you consider creating the public information officer position. I've been here for six years and the county has no communication strategy, none. We have tried to band-aid this with Kane County Connects for six years. I've done my best to uh, do that defunct that function. It's been a de facto communications position uh, or communications division. Um, we need to have a strategy. We need to know what we're doing. We need to measure our success. We need someone who has experience in doing this job. And um, finally, uh, just a quick history on the, the, the position itself. $50,000 of the Kane County Connects uh, was funded by the uh, Riverboat Fund. Uh, my salary was $70,000 a year, and the county paid for my benefits. I was a full-time employee of the county. So that $20,000 plus my benefits was already in the budget. It was just supplemented by that $50,000 through the Riverboat Fund. Um, I urge you as a citizen of Kane County to, to have at least one full-time communications manager. It would be not in the county's best interest not to have one at this time. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Mr. Kenyon. I would like to make a motion that the board authorize the chairman to form a committee and take all these ideas and put them together because we could discuss this forever one, or until lunchtime anyway. Not really so we put together a committee really to discuss agenda. that and come back and take it to finance no. and give us the solution. We'll vote on that. Okay. But, you know, it's, you have all, everybody's thinking the same way. Mm -hmm. It's the amazing thing is you say, Here's a county of 535,000 people and you don't have an information officer? You gotta be kidding me. We have seven of them and they take care of everything else. So, hooray for you. You're gonna step forward and take the bull by the horns. It's a farming term. 
Not an agenda item. Is the, is, the, is the notion that the committee would report back to the board or report to finance? Finance. Finance. I heard finance. Finance. I'll second that motion. Discussion. The, the, Mr. Martin. We're, if we move this motion forward, um, we're kind of heading where I said, at least in my opinion, where I thought I didn't want to be, which is we're going to be involved in a discussion process. And we, we do need to reinstate our communication. And what I think, what, when, I, when I evaluate that motion, what, what I would like to get something moving. Um, and what I would suggest as an alternate to that would be that we, we, we create a position, whether we call it the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the, the reinstitution of our, of our Kane County connects, you know, administration, what uh, titles confuse me. Okay. Because they can, you know, you can, what was it? The old joke, you give somebody a, make them a vice president. So you don't have to pay them as much. <laughs> um, the, we need, we need to understand a little bit better. I think Mr. Shepro made the point. We have, we have some communications officers and other at various departments. Perhaps we could, we could combine some of those activities uh, and, and have it done with one um, and maybe not. But what we feel comfortable with, I think as a group is that we, we believe we can get back into the budget enough money to support one individual. And from my perspective, on an immediate basis, we need to reinstitute a, an orderly manner of communication. And then perhaps the marching orders of that position should be, let's evaluate it, okay? With the idea that we, we don't, I don't, I can say I don't wanna harp on the budget, but as I said before, that's 80% that's of our conversation mm -hmm. uh, and, and it should be. If we can reinstate a position that will, will firm up our, our Kane County Connect portal, for lack of a better term, and then have that position with your assistance or this com committee that we're recommending, look at it, see what we need, see what we can, because, because we need, we need to, to move with deliberate and planned steps. And to do two positions right now without having that, A, I don't think we can pay for it, to be real blunt. But B, um, um, I'd like to have the time, which this scenario doesn't allow, for us to find out what about other, what about the other people that are coordinating public relations for the various departments. You know, maybe this all gets combined. Maybe everybody is, you know, provides their raw information to the public relations officer, and it gets, you know, compiled and put together. I mean, I, I just, I, I'd like that thought through before we create a position on top of some other positions and in lieu of others. But so my suggestion would be that we reinstate, reinstate Kane County next with a marching order that this should begin an evaluation of what in fact we can do with one person and how much of another person do we in fact need if we, if the budget would at some point allow. I'll withdraw my second. What? I, I thought just wanted to move us forward. Kane County Connects is a separate issue. I'm not talking against that, but I don't want to make it complicated. Take all these ideas and put them together and go to finance with a, pro a proposal, financing yourself. Mm -hmm. So let's not make it too complicated. We don't have to inter inter uh, reinvent the wheel every day. That's, that's what I want to do. Again, my question is, do we need to authorize anything to keep this going for 90 days? Is two, 200 hours, he's going to burn through those, boom. Do you need 90 days worth while this is running through a proposed committee? Separate issue. Separate issue. Any way you want to handle it, I think it needs to be addressed. Separate issue. Yes, Mr. Franz. Um, 
I agree with everything that's been said, and I, I guess I'm wondering if Mr. Kenyon would amend his uh, motion to, uh, I think we need to leave here with some concrete uh, action. And it's very clear that everybody I've heard wants to hire uh, the communications director. So, you know, if you'd be willing to make a motion to direct uh, the chairman to hire the communications director and then do the follow up on the, uh, the need for a second position. But give us a concrete uh, action on, on filling that position once and for all. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to Attorney. defer to our state's attorney. Um, it's down as a discussion item. Uh, can we make a motion on a discussion item? No. So at this point, you can create the ad hoc committee who can discuss the matter and then ultimately bring it, but we cannot do anything as a final action just on a discussion item. So thank you for that. Okay, and then one more question. Uh, the chairman sets the agenda for the executive com committee. Uh, could the chairman put the, uh, I'm confused on the two names as John is, but our, our outreach coordinator or Rick Nagel, can that be added to our executive committee agenda? So for clarity, just for clarity, uh, the position that the board is addressing right now is not the outreach coordinator. It's not Mr. Nagel. Um, what we're talking about specifically, not an individual, mm -hmm. because that we'd have to go into executive session to discuss that. The position we're talking about is the public information officer. Okay. That seems to be from what I'm hearing uh, as a collective voice. Well, then perhaps, um, Madam Chair, you could put the public information officer on the uh, agenda for our executive committee then for January. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Shepro. Uh, I guess now I'm a little bit confused. If I understood Mr. Martin's comments is that uh, I think he was saying, I don't want to put words in his mouth, that what we should do first is we ought to reinstate, uh, I suppose, the, the action that uh, was done to zero out the King County Connects portion of um, the budget and start from there. And then following that, uh, I don't do hand gestures. <laughs> uh, and following that, then we would proceed to the larger picture. But I guess I also have a question for anybody from finance about that. Uh, <clears throat> that was what action that was taken with respect to this year's budget. Uh, do we have the, the funds available to simply reverse that action and restore uh, those funds, or do we keep having to go through the uh, the, the the temp arrangement uh, on an ongoing basis? But if the answer is we can easily simply reverse that action, and I guess we can't do that at this meeting, but we could ask finance to put it on their agenda, consider it, and that certainly could come back at the January meeting. So. I guess I've got multiple questions, starting with Mr. Martin. Did I understand correctly what you were suggesting we do? I, I, the, only, the only difference would be, uh, the answer is fundamentally yes. The only difference in my mind would be that the, the charge for the recreation of that position is that we also begin an analysis of how we can either morph that position or, or uh, deal with the future, but I don't want to. I don't want to get bogged down on on that issue, and that's why I'd like it to move ahead. Get Kane County Connects back operating on a on a rational, planned basis, and then have that whole thing evaluated. What should what should be in Kane County Connects? What what type of news was there? Latitude if we change. If we change format or something, is there latitude for more time? These are these are hypotheticals, but they're all valid in my mind hypotheticals. Uh, but to get the newsletter going and reestablish that commission with with the proviso that there be a marching order, that this not be a static 
situation that that in that in that context where whether it's an ad hoc committee i think and i think that's a good idea but we we need to evaluate what kane county connects is doing what it should be doing how much extra time can we create in that position and then we can begin to look at what the options are and i don't know i'm saying without having knowledge I, the people that are handling communications for other uh, departments within the county that type of thing I, i'm I'm saying that because I think I know it, but somebody maybe can correct me and say that there are no people that have that designation. Would you be willing to make a motion to carry forward your suggestion? Um, well, I just, I'm, I'm sorry. I had a sideways conversation. There is a motion on the floor, just so we're aware. And from Mr. Kenny. I believe it died for lack of a second. Um, yeah, yes. yes. Um, but I thought that, uh, excuse me, I thought that you can't move. You made a motion, didn't you? No, I didn't. No, okay. no, All right. okay. no, it was not, and it was not second. But just as a point of clarification again, the position as described for the public information officer includes Kane County Connects. It's not exclusive of, it includes it. The other position, which would be a, just a specialist because we're talking about two different positions now. And I'm hearing again, your direction, you would want one. So I need to know which one that we're going to be looking at. The social media specialist primarily deals with Kane County Connects and social media posts. That is an adjunct to the public information officer. So that's then I just to, to to mesh in with your comment, the the description that would include Kane County Connects in my mind is the is the one that we'd be we'd be looking at, and and I think and let, uh, if I mean I guess the answer is I want Kane County Connects back and reestablished, and if that's within that that definition, now today we can't really. We can't really move anything forward with a formal motion because we don't have anything on the agenda that would allow that. But if the consensus could be uh, that we want that, that we want that, uh, for that the concept of Kane County Connects formalized, then with the then, and I'm just guessing a committee structure, but then it could go before finance. They could determine where the money is. Uh, for this to, to reestablish this, and then we'd have that that we'd have something concrete for finance to look at. Then we'd have a, we could get a concrete recommendation back to the executive committee that we could vote on and and move it ahead. That's that's my goal here is to is to keep it simple and direct enough that we don't lose the conversation in, at months of months of uh, conversation. And if we could. Describe the position such that we can begin uh, begin uh, relegitimizing. I, I'm, not, I'm not coming up with a good word. Establish establish with finality. Uh, Kane County connects with a with a with a proviso in there that the goal of doing this is that we then evaluate how how we can best utilize that position that is under there, um, if we can keep the, you know, the money basically in the same ballpark that we had with Kane County Connects, I think we move it forward while we're having this discussion. Madam Chair Gums has a comment. I think Mr. Sanchez, excuse me, had his hand up previously. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to briefly comment that I'd be most comfortable seeing a resolution on the next finance committee agenda that addresses the Kane County Connects position so we can get that moving quickly. Uh, I think we can find money at least for this year uh, pretty quickly for that. And then going forward, an ad hoc committee perhaps or very transparent internal discussions that happen about the overall, I believe the officer position, the, the larger, right. uh, more yeah. public outreach as opposed to Kane County Connects and social media outreach uh, position going forward so that we can have that discussion, define what we really want and then take action. Ford. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I am agreeing with uh, Sanchez that it seems to be that everybody, if I get the titles right now, the social media specialists we want to move forward on. And with the um, public information officer, 
if we take out the word higher and we just want to investigate it more, I think we're in a position to move this forward as what we're here to do to finance. Madam Chair, Gums has a comment. Yes. Um, in reference to the public information officer position, I would feel that all of the um, King County connects the social media issues and the media within the 11 departments would fall under the responsibility of the public information officer. Having said that, um, hiring somebody with those skills, having heard all the discussion, that person, um, whoever it might be, would have the expertise to coordinate and get to the final goal of what we're talking about today. I would like to see that, um, that position go forward to finance because ultimately that person's going to be coordinating everything that we're talking about now. Absolutely, absolutely. I, 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 I agree, but oh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to uh, alert everybody that finance does meet on Wednesday, December 30th. Mm -hmm. So that would pass then, and then it could move forward to our executive committee in January and then the full county board. So that would work. So thank you. And I think we've... Uh, I've indulged the board uh, at quite length, and I certainly appreciate all of your, your comments. Um, if I may, um, I would like to, um, with consensus, um, I'm hearing multitude of voices uh, for both uh, having the public information specialist, um, uh, officer, I'm sorry, and the social media specialist. Um, if I may, I'd like to be able to present a hybrid uh, to the finance committee, which would combine the responsibilities of both positions uh, to bring that to finance for their consideration, um, and then onward to the executive committee. So that um, I'm certainly hearing everyone's voice saying you would just like to fund one position. Um, I hate to limit the scope to just Kane County Connects, as I think that may not serve um, your needs as, as discussed. Um, and I understand that the public information officer may be too broad in scope at this point and it needs a little bit more um, consideration on your part uh, to determine what that job requirement is. So I would like uh, a consensus uh, and your approval that I can bring forth a, a hybrid uh, to the finance committee um, and we can uh, certainly present it to an ad hoc committee if so you choose. Uh, to certainly get your input on what that job description would be like. Uh, uh, Mrs. Wetzel uh, will certainly be helpful with all of that and any kind of comments we can amend, adjust accordingly uh, so that it, it is at least a, um, a position that can be funded uh, for next year. And I've already talked to uh, Mr. Uh, Fonsick about this and uh, he has come up with an appropriate way uh, to be able to fund this for the short term in the long term next year, we can start talking about that as we prepare the 22 budget. So do I have a consensus to approve that? Yes. Yes. And yes. 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 We're all here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Woman, <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay, very good. Appreciate that. Um, Okay, so now the real fun begins. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the real fun. Yeah. <laughs> real fun. I was having a good time. Uh, we have a resolution uh, number 20-493 uh, coming through the Human Services uh, Committee, which uh, Mr. Sergis will be presenting to us. Uh, requiring facial coverings and social distancing in county offices and buildings during the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, Mr. Sergis. Um, I think, does everybody have this? Has everybody read through it? Is there any discussion? Yes. So moved. Second. Second. I have, I have a dis uh, point of, I have a question, please. Bates. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, Mrs. Um, under exceptions uh, to wearing masks, 
Um, number C, um, I would like to have something added that would say thank you. Uh, number C, please, on the screen, um, where those persons who are excused from wearing a mask mm -hmm. should be sure to social distance at all times. Anyone who has trouble breathing, uh, et cetera, that, those should, that something should be added there to make sure that they are social distancing. It's right there on the screen. I have no argument personally with that. Um, my only concern is that there are sometimes people who may have um, cognitive um, disabilities that may not recognize that. Well, we can encourage them, try to help them do that. The language that's included in the resolution comes from the ADA. So if we wanted to add something, we could say that it's recommended for social distancing as opposed to making it mandated. If this is something that you want to go, you'd have to make an, a motion to do so and then have a second with the language you want added. Uh, so if I want to make it a recommendation, can we just... Amend the I... resolution. You'd have yes. to make a motion to amend it, asking for the recommended language of social distancing. Okay. So Ms. Bates, I... there's a motion and a second on the floor. You would be simply motioning to amend. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I would like to motion to amend that we add the words, uh, those persons should be, it is recommended that those persons be encouraged to social distance at all times. Is that? Second. Second. Okay, so this was to amend by Bates. By Bates. So if there's no discussion, we'd be calling the roll on the amendment. Correct. Okay. The, oh. But the motion was made by Bates, and who seconded the amendment? Braz. Okay. That's what I needed. Thank so you. So we have a motion to accept the amended motion, correct? Up the amendment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the amendment. Of the amendment. All right. So we I have to call the roll. Call the roll, please. Because yep. it's an amendment. Uh, Ellen? Ellen, aye. Bates? Aye. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Davis? You're okay. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal? Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Opie? Opie, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis? Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Uh, Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. It passes. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next is. Now that we vote on the. No, now it's the motion. Now we vote on the as amended. As amended. Uh, my apologies. Okay. Discussion on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> yes. Mr. Roberts, I you say. Um, as I understand it, this this will amend uh, the employee handbook at least until such time as there's no longer disaster in effect. But I guess my question for our State's attorney, it seems to me that this is a <clears throat> term and condition of employment. So my question is, does this need to be bargained with the bargaining units or do we have the right to simply change it unilaterally? So given the fact that we're in a pandemic and it's definitely something that we've been looking to in regards, thank you, Mr. Caius, in regards to all of the mandates, 
again, this is something that is there, but has accommodations that is built in. So if, for example, there's somebody who will be affected by it, then obviously the language is in there. I do not think that this is something that we would have to bring to the unions for collective bargaining. Obviously, we can take a look at that if that's something that comes up, but it's something that is a reaction to obviously the pandemic that we're in. So it would be covered by the disaster proclamation as essentially been collective bargaining rights. So that's an excellent question. I'm going to ask Michelle Nierman to come up as she's going to be much more familiar with this. And I know when to bring in the big guns. Good morning. Uh, potentially, I, we have management rights under each and every contract. We would argue that this is an emergency type of situation. There is always a potential that we would have to do some sort of impact bargaining, uh, and that would probably be more along the lines of reasonable accommodations, that type of thing. I have got to tell you, throughout this entire um, year, We've actually had unions coming to us wanting face coverings and wanting safety measures implemented. Um, so I, I think I think we are well within your rights to mandate the face coverings as an emergency precaution under management rights to protect the workforce. And then we can uh, deal with any impact bargaining that we might need to do. What is the penalty on it? they do not follow this policy. Is that a terminable offense? Yes. <laughs> uh, most likely you would, uh, under, under the various disciplinary theories and in the collective bargaining agreements, we have progressive discipline. Uh, definitely under the collective bargaining agreements, you would have to go through a course of progressive discipline. Um, so the first offense typically is a verbal warning, second written warning, third, uh, suspension, demotion, termination, um, at will employees can be treated a little bit differently. So that would not be a, a disaster exception. To In, uh, the egregiousness of the offense is written into almost each and every contract. I would have to go back and double check. But basically, progressive discipline means that you don't have, there's usually always an exception written into the contracts that if something is so egregious, there's a violation is so egregious, you can skip the uh, progressive disciplinary steps. And then under the collective bargaining agreements, you have the grievance and arbitration procedures that are contractual so that uh, they could grieve a disciplinary. <clears throat> action. <clears throat> Madam Chair, if we can chalk this one up to no good deed will go unpunished. <laughs> the, the spirit of this is absolutely intended for safety. Mm -hmm. We understand that, you know, this could open a can of worms later and, and, but I think the urgency outweighs that concern right now. So for the health and safety of all of our elected officials and our employees, uh, that is with the spirit that this is. I'm in agreement. Very good. Thank you. So uh, we have the motion is on the floor. It has been seconded. On the amendment as amended. We're calling the vote. And if there's no more discussion, we're calling the vote as amended. As amended. Thank you. Make the motion second. Sergis Sanchez. Oh, maybe call the roll. Okay. Ellen? Ellen? Ellen, I. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Davis is not here. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Not here. Kenyon. Kenyon, yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. Kopi, yes. Hugh Leonard. Leonard, yes. Lewis. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez. Yes. Sheflo. Sheffro. 
Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. That passes. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next is a series of resolutions uh, to approve CAC funding, and I will turn that over to uh, uh, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, some of these came in yesterday or finalized yesterday. So what you're seeing right now, they don't have numbers. I'm just going to ask you to follow along. I'm going to go in a, <laughs> go in a particular order that seems to make the most logical sense. Um, we're going to start off, I'll call, I'll make a motion on the second page, the one that actually has a number, 20-495. <clears throat> make a motion for authorizing fiscal year 21 budget adjustment related to 10-820 allocation and ask for a second. Mr. Frost. Uh, so for this one, we, the CAC approved some budget changes back in October. Um, I believe it was about three and a half million was moved over to the fire protection district and about 600,000 to the townships, park districts, forest preserves, and additionally libraries. We were in our budget process at that time. The budget was frozen. It was on public display, could not be changed in any way. And we had to vote on that and go through our whole uh, process and now that the budget is not frozen we can make these changes that we would have otherwise made at that time so this is a housekeeping thing on our budget side um, if anyone has any questions comments excuse me this is resolution 20-495 yes you're skipping 494 yeah i'm going in out of order so if you want to just make marks on which ones we go through i have them numbered but you don't <laughs> Okay, uh, no more discussion. We have a roll call, please. Roll call, please. Yeah, I don't know Wait who for asked her. for the roll call on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the roll call on 20-495. Ellen? Ellen? For 495. Ellen, I. Okay, Bates? Yes. Herman? Herman, yes. Brown? Yes. Uh, Ford. Yes. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Yes. Kickball. Kickball. Kenyon. Yes. Kenyon. Kenyon. Yes. Tyus. Tyus. Yes. Opie. Opie. Yes. Leonard. Leonard. Yes. Lewis. Martin. Martin. Yes. Molina. Molina. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Shepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. Passes. Okay, the second one is actually the, um, the first to last. At, so at the, the second to last at the bottom there, or first to last, sorry. Uh, authorizing contract amendments with the Kane County Coronavirus Relief Fund Consultant and Project Manager. I move this. Seek a second. Mr. Martin. This doesn't have a number. So if you look on the second page, there are about six or seven resolutions that don't have numbers. So it's it's the, the one just before the last. Uh, Mr. Martin seconded. This is just, uh, again, amending contracts, kind of housekeeping thing um, for KEB, our third-party administrator and also Faviola, our state's attorney staff, and I, perhaps some for Michelle as well. Are you included in this or no? Okay, yeah, so um, it's just a housekeeping thing. We're amending the contract because the work is still going to continue past uh, December 30th. So we have to uh, just have it all on, on the books. And who's- Will this require a number or some designation? Yeah. It, it will receive one. Oversee yes. It will mm -hmm. receive one. Who's second, I'm sorry. Mr. Martin. Thank you. Ms. Warnicke. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Jared, does this um, change any of the funds that we're paying these people? Is the salary change at all? No, not that's no. not my understanding. Michelle could give you a little more detail on that. Um, I think we worked out with Joe Onzik to provide for a 2% increase for Fabiola's salary. Okay. Um, the rates for the KEB are remaining the same. It's just that there were new programs added under program number two for the business program and under the uh, Office of Community Reinvestment for the historical museums and societies, as well as their, um, I'm forgetting, 
uh, there was three different ideas. programs, sorry. Um, and so they have, so basically they're gonna be reviewing 380 additional applications. And then there's a small budgeted amount for closeout costs to uh, comply with reporting requirements to the federal government. Is there a, a expiration date, a D-Day at all? Or um, right now, uh, extensions were signed by the states, the former state's attorney, Joseph McMahon, to expire on September of, of 2021. Oh, okay. But no dollar amounts were changed All at right. that time. Thank you, Michelle. Uh -huh. No further discussion, ready to call the vote. Okay, Ellen. Ellen, aye. Bates. Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Davis is not here. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Kenyon, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi? Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Kopi, Lewis? yes. Thank you. Lewis? Okay, she's not here. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? And Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicki? Yes. That passes. Okay, the next motion is the one right above that. Uh, authorizing allocation and budget adjustment for expenses incurred and in administering the coronavirus relief fund programs. I will move it, seek a second, Mr. Martin. This is a housekeeping item, um, updating projected expenses. Any questions or comments? Hearing no discussion, can you call the vote? Okay, Ellen. Ellen, aye. Bates? Yes. Thank you. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis is not here. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicki? Yes. That passes. Okay, the next amendment is, is on the first page, 20-494. This authorizing approval of additional applications for coronavirus relief right. fund program agreement with small businesses as of December 16th, uh, seconded by Mr. Martin. Uh, I'm going to have to uh, right away move to amend this. Now, there was another resolution that I don't see on here that was for December 10th. Is it included in this? Oh, it's in the placeholder. Okay. I didn't know if I should just amend this one to include that. Okay. Going on. Joanne's drafted that as a separate resolution, so I think we could just vote on 494. Okay. Um, the only amendment to that one was there was an updated yeah, the dollar amount um, attachment to it, showing additional businesses on there. Okay. So the placeholder one. Okay. The placeholder one is a separate resolution that um, Joe drafted over the weekend. Okay. All right. Um, we have an updated list. I will amend it. I move to amend um, the, the in, there are businesses we don't have on our sheet. Um, so there's an increase of $194,000 to, I'm sorry, an increase of $194,273.54. Can I get a second on that amendment? Mr. Frost, thank you. And so this is an amendment to 494, correct? Yes. Okay, I just wanna make sure, hang on. Uh, you put the 16th. That's the one where, yeah. Okay, so this is just to approve the um, amendment. 
for 494. All right, so Alan. Alan, aye. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Davis is not here. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Opie? Opie, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Shepro? Sleeping. This is for the amendment? Sorry. Four nine four. Four nine four. Yes. Okay. Silva. Silva. Yes. Strathman. Strathman. Yes. Sergius. Sergius. Yes. Tepe. Yes. Weber. Yes. Winicky. Yes. That passes. Now the back to the original as amended. Okay. So this is the roll on twenty four ninety four as amended. Allen. Alan, aye. Bates? Bates, yes. Herman? Herman, yes. Brown? Yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi, yes. Uh, Leonard? Leonard, yes. This is not here. Martin? Yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Or Nikki? Yes. It also passes. Okay. Okay, the next resolution on the second page, it's the second one down, authorizing allocation of unobligated coronavirus relief funds to establish priorities and delegation of authority to allocate any remaining unobligated coronavirus relief funds to the CARES Act Allocation Committee with an established guidelines and standards. I'm so moved, second by Mr. Martin. Uh, this sets our priorities with what to do with all of the excess money, the, the unallocated funds that we have from all of the programs that we have running. Um, and it also gives the, uh, the CARES Act committee the, uh, the ability to, um, to, to uh, approve funding agreements as well. Any questions? Okay. Okay. No discussion? No. Kopi to be recognized, please. Yes, Mr. Kopi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, how much money are we talking about? Essentially? Uh, there is a, a, a chart, Blair, the unallocated. Uh, I don't have the chart in front of me. I'm know. sorry. Um, Mr. Anzik sent out um, an email yesterday regarding the, it has a list. I don't have my computer in front of me today. I'm sorry. I know you had the, yeah, there okay. it is. Right there. So I don't know if you could see on the phone, Mr. Kopi, but basically after all is told, we have two hundred thirty-seven dollars, two hundred thirty-seven and eighteen dollars left. Two hundred thirty-seven thousand, eighteen dollars left. So. Um, oh, two. Okay. We're not in the billions. No. No, the okay, number is the, the number started much higher, and it's 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 gone down quite substantially. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Discussion. Hearing none. Uh, call call. Okay. Ellen. Ellen, aye. Bates. Bates, yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Yes. Ford. Yes. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. Kopi, yes. Leonard. Yes. Uh, Martin. Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Chepro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. 
It passes. Okay, the next resolution is uh, on your list. It is the third one down on the second page, authorizing the Office of Community Reinvestment to redistribute on the obligated coronavirus funds between established grant programs. Uh, so I move and second by Mr. Fraz. So this basically just gives Scott Berger and his office the ability to, after this meeting, if there is any, there is any leftover money that they have from their program, they can move it into the small business. So it just gives him that authority to do that. And also in consultation with myself as chair of the CARES Act committee. Any comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Shepro? At the uh, committee, we discussed that, uh, that it was specifically authorized Mr. Berger. I don't have it in front of me at the moment. I'm sorry. I actually forgot my laptop. It's the first time I've ever done that. So I don't have my, uh, I'm not prepared, apparently. <laughs> there was some it, question it, about whether or not the, uh, a broad delta was appropriate. Microphone, please. It's, it's giving the authorization to Mr. Berger and his, <coughs> his, who he designates to oh, have such director. authority. So if Mr. Berger feels that one of his staff members needs to, to undertake that um, function for time-saving purposes or whatever, then- Ace Attorney Nierman showed me the language and that's what I, we discussed, so I thank you. Yeah, there is one email that came out yesterday that has all of these resolutions. I know it's a lot though, so. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, may we have call the roll? Sure. Okay. Ellen. Allen, aye. Bates. Bates, yes. Berman. Berman, yes. Brown. Yes. Ford. Yes. Fraz. Yes. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Kopi. Kopi, yes. Leonard. Leonard, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winnicky? Yes. It passes. Okay, uh, the last one on the second page, resolution recommendation of allocation and distribution. Um, Mr. Onzik crunched a lot of numbers. Thank you very much, Mr. Onzik, for all the work you put in uh, between the last CARES Act committee meeting and today. Um, so this is just the overall plan, what we're gonna do with all the unallocated money we're aware of right now and, and other things. Is there any, I, I move it and Mr. Martin seconds. Are there any questions or comments? Please read this again, please. Oh, it's just the recommendation of allocation and distribution of the CARES Act relief funding and budget adjustment. Okay, thank you. The last one on the second page. Okay, good. I'm with you. Okay, hearing and no other discussion, can you please call the roll? Sure. Allen? Allen, aye. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Gums, yes. Well. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi, yes. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Um, Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Silva? Silva, yes. Rathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Sergis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winnicky? Yes. Passes. Passes. Yes. Mr. Sergis. On that final one, sorry. On that last one on the agenda, mm -hmm. it says Corona Act relief findings. Mm -hmm. That means fundings. Yeah. Is that I, I, it's just a scribbler's? Whatever. Yeah, it's a scribbler's. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That correction. So there is one more resolution. Um, it, it, the placeholder resolution. Uh, it's. it's um, it's just, for just approving the small business applicants from December 10th. We have the one on here for December 16th. 
this is for December 10th. It's just how everything was flowing work-wise. It, it didn't make it directly on here in time. Understanding that is the, the placeholder. Michelle, is that correct? This was, this was in the attachment? Is Ms. Guzman on, Fabiola? I have an audio issue. I see her, but Fabiola, are you there? Is your spreadsheet for the 7,112? Yeah, I, yes. I think she's having technical issues. I think she can hear you, um, but I don't think she can speak. Well, we've got half of it. <laughs> Instructor, to turn on her video and- uh, He is commenting it. in the chat, the placeholder is different. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. We're getting this figured out. Fabiola, momentarily. there was on your invite a phone number. You could always try calling in as well as having your computer on. It was said separately as, as a second one when I realized that it wasn't in the agenda. Very routine resolution. It's just we have to make sure we follow the proper procedure. And things have been super crazy getting a, a look on the back end of how this whole process has been going as the committee chairman now. It's, it's impressive. Just, I feel like wherever their, their workspaces are, there's just like papers flying everywhere, pencils being broken. Okay, I mean, so they need to there's a lot of work happening. the other attachment. Yes, the 1210. Okay, yes, that is correct. So we would need to approve the 1210 attachment as well. Okay, just as a, as a matter of procedure, since it's not on the agenda, we're still okay to go with it? Well, it would be amending actually. Or should, can we reconsider the 1216 yes. resolution and then amend it to include the 1210? To include both attachments, one, the one from 1210 and the one from okay. 1216. Okay, so if I could make a motion to reconsider 20-494. Uh, One second. Hold on. Can we have a call that vote, please? Hold on. Um, Shepro second that. Okay. This is to uh, reconsider, All right? 494. 494. Okay. And just for clarity, can you yeah. say the motion again, please? So we're all Yes. Clear. Um, just motioning to reconsider 20 494, which was the approval of the small business grants as of December 16th. But there is also one that came through the committee from December 10th that um, it just didn't get included accidentally. It's just, like I said, a long, complicated process to get here. <laughs> so I'm just going to move um, to reconsider that. And then I would like to amend it to include the December 10th uh, worksheet. Second the motion. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Okay. Ellen? Ellen, aye. Bates? Yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Opie? Kofi, yes. Leonard. Leonard, yes. Martin. Martin, yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Shefro? Shefro, yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winicky? Yes. Passes? Passes. Okay. Do we vote on the main motion now? Is that because we just amended it, so now we have to go back? Correct. So can you repeat the motion again, please? Uh, yes, the motion is to authorize the approval of small business grant applications uh, for December 10th and December 16th. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? If none, please call the roll. Ellen. 
Alan, I. Bates? Bates, yes. Berman? Berman, yes. Brown? Yes. Ford? Yes. Raz? Yes. Gums? Yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Dias? Point of order, or uh, excuse me, the point of information is this is for the um, to add the table extra? Yes. From okay. from uh, December 10th. From December 10th. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, Caius, yes. And could somebody Kopi? please put their phone on mute? Thank I you. I think it's Kopi. Kopi? Yeah. Kopi, yes. Thank you. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Uh, Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Sanchez? Yes. Chepro? Yes. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, yes. Sergis? Tepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winnicky? Yes. It passes. Madam Chair, unless the state's attorney has anything, state's attorney's office has anything to add, I think that concludes the CARES Act committee portion of the Thank meeting. you. Mr. Foss? Um, as tough as that was, I just want to let everybody know that all those resolutions were written on the floor of the CAC committee. And I just want to uh, give thanks to uh, the Chairman Sanchez and Assistant State's Attorney Nearman for keeping up with us the other day and bringing it to us intact and getting through today. It was uh, like herding cats. So um, it was brutal. So thank you. And, and uh, Jerry, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yes. And I, I would also like to compliment the entire board. Um, I know many of you have heard from your small businesses and the not only the emotional duress that they are feeling that is sometimes quite severe, um, as well as their financial duress that uh, many of them are indeed feeling uh, on the precipice of, uh, of closing. Uh, this badly needed funding is going to be celebrated and I hope that the checks are able to go out uh, as quickly as possible uh, to bring some real relief uh, to these businesses so that we can be supportive of them as we possibly can. So thank you for the last very hard earned few months that you have done and congratulations for spending, I think every dime, uh, or almost every dime. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> so well done, very well done. Thank you all. Uh, it's uh, really to be commended for your work. Um, so if there is uh, no other business, I'd like to um, have a motion and a, and a second uh, so that we may move into our executive session to discuss settlement of claims and pending litigation. Uh, please call the roll. We, we should need a motion. We're going to move. Gums mo motions. I have a second. I'm sorry, who motioned? Gums. 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 Thank you. Board seconds. Thank you. And this isn't too exact. Ellen. Ellen. Ellen I. Bates. Bates to go into executive session. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Berman. Berman. Yes. Brown. Yes. Ford. Yes. 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 Gums. Gums. Yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Kenyon? Yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Kopi to go into executive session. Leonard? Leonard, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Okay, thank you. Sanchez? Yes. Shepro? No. Okay, Silva? Silva, yes. Rathman? Strathman, yes. Burgess? Pepe? Yes. Weber? Yes. Winnicky? Yes. Passes. Kopi, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll need a moment to actually. Uh... If there's a person on the phone with the phone number ends in 602, if you could identify yourself. Okay, then uh, I just. Uh, this is Scott Berger. for the laner mission. They're on the call for one of the claims. So, so which one's the Monica? 
And uh, Mr. Kusara. And again? Uh, U-C-C-W-A-R-A. I hope you weren't in a hurry to go anywhere. You have too many retired people. All right, everybody on the line that's going to get the invite, please accept the move into the executive session, and we won't get started until everybody's in. She's, can we get Celeste back in the room? Yeah, she's the phone. Here she is. Okay. I think we have everybody, but we probably should call them all. Okay. Sorry. How do you put This is recording. Okay. Okay, this is roll call for closed session. Alan? Alan Okay. Bates? Bates, are you present? Berman? Are you present? Are you not? Brown. Here. Dav oh, Davis is not here. Ford. Here. Yes. Fries. Yes. Gums, are you present? Gums. Iqbal. Are you present? Kenyon. Yes. Caius. Caius, yes. Opie. Okay, we are now back in open session. Uh, welcome back. Um, is there any new business? In, in hearing no new business, uh, may I have uh, a motion and a second to adjourn? Let's get out of here. John <laughs> <laughs> Strathman, second. Strathman, very good. <laughs> Um, yeah. All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. 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 Motion passes. Happy holidays, everybody.